What's up everybody? Welcome back to Locked Up 365. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the crazy things I've seen inmates do while I was incarcerated. Okay, let's jump straight into it. The first thing that I seen I thought was very unusual was inmates smoking coffee. Now I'm sure you're wondering, how can an inmate smoke coffee? In jail, you get instant coffee. So what they would do, they would take like a spoonful of instant coffee and they would add just a little bit of water, just enough to get it wet. And they would take toilet paper and they would douse the toilet paper in this straight coffee, basically. And then they would turn around and let it dry out a little bit. Once it started getting dry, they would roll it up. So it looked like a cigarette or something, but it would be like this long. So once it completely dried out, then they could smoke it. I've seen a lot of inmates who didn't want to wait for it to dry. They were trying to put it on top of the hot pot so it could get warm faster. But once it completely dried, it almost looked like a little bitty cigar. And when they lit it, it smelled like a real cigarette, even though it wasn't. It would take forever to burn. When you're in a 10-man pod, you still have guards walking by and they can smell that smoke. So usually when you smoke, it's very fast. But with these coffee sticks, it took a long time to burn. So usually there'd be three or four people in the bathroom trying to chief down this coffee stick. I ain't gonna lie, I tried it one time. I ended up just getting a headache. I also seen people try to smoke like potato peels and orange peels, like some weird stuff. They just try to smoke anything in there because they're just deprived of that nicotine. I guess if they're smoking something that takes their mind off of it and they think they're getting something off of it, I'm not really sure. But let's move on to the next thing since we're on the coffee, snorting coffee. A lot of people will snort coffee. I've seen countless people do line after line of coffee. So yeah, they're definitely in there sniffing coffee, smoking coffee, drinking coffee. I also seen people snort like chili packs out of the ramen noodle, but this was mostly just the dare. They're just trying to get some entertainment going, like, hey, I'll give you a noodle if you snort a chili pack. The guy usually ends up doing it, and then he's hurting all night because his brain is burning. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's good. little good fun at somebody else's expense, but at the end of the night, he's eating a noodle, so... He ain't starving no more, so it works out for everybody. I ain't saying it's the right thing to do. I'm just saying I seen it, and it was kind of comical at the time. While I was in county jail, we lit cigarettes two different ways. We would pop a socket, which is basically you take a pencil. You, you need the lead. Take the lead, stick it in with a piece of toilet paper, and it'll, it'll light, and you can use it real quick. And there's usually a big spark. Sometimes it'll throw your breaker in your cell, then they're going to come in and light you up. and It's just a whole ordeal if you get caught popping a socket. But the easier way not to get caught is to use batteries. Usually people will have batteries for something, like their radio. Sometimes some county jails, if you don't have a radio, you can't order batteries. But some jails don't care. They'll just sell whoever batteries. So... If you can get somebody to give you a set of batteries, or if you have some yourself, now lighting it off the batteries, you're going to take a positive end and a negative end. We used to take and break a staple that we would find in like one of the church pamphlets or something. We'd break the staple in half. And you don't want to do this barehanded because you'll burn your hands. So you always want to put something over it, whether it be like a piece of toilet paper or what over the staple. But we would use the back of the toilet and you would just touch them together and that staple gets red hot and you can put the cigarette up to it and light it. You got to do it very fast because the batteries will run out even if they're brand new and if you got to take more than one attempt whoever's batteries they are they're going to be mad because they ain't going to be listening to that radio if that's the only batteries they have. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is e-cigarettes. I know a lot of jails are carrying e-cigarettes these days because they're like $15 and they're probably getting them for like a buck a piece. And you can literally smoke these things down in 30 minutes. The battery dies so quick on these e-cigarettes, it ain't funny. 
but some of them I've seen literally last four or five days if you keep it to yourself. But if you got a million people hitting them, it's going to be gone in no time. But once the e-cigarette is gone, people will pay you for the filter out of it. Now these e-cigarettes, they have stickers on them to where they're like tamper proof. But there are inmates that can take these stickers off and you'll never even know the difference. And what they're wanting out of them, they will pay somebody a noodle, two noodles, however desperate they are, they will pay them for the filter. What they want to do, they want to dip the filter because it's straight nicotine in there. Now, it tastes disgusting. It's, it's horrible, I'm not going to lie to you. I only did it a few times because it's just so nasty. And I didn't want to take the risk of losing my e-cigarettes for the entire time I was at that jail. I've seen a lot of people get their e-cigarette privilege taken over them making one noodle off somebody dipping it because the people buying it, they don't care. They'll rip it in half, give half to their buddy, or save half for later. Then you can't put the e-cigarette back together. You can't put the filter back in there right. So yeah, you just got to be careful with, if you're going to do this, always make sure that you don't leave the cotton like bone dry and just make sure everything's put back together right and that sticker ain't messed up. The next thing I'm going to be talking about, I was already sentenced. I was waiting to go to the camp. They were working me inside the hallways and we would have to take out the garbage, sweep the hallways, serve the trays, stuff like that. Now the guards that dipped, they would throw their dip in the garbage can. So when we went, took the bag out, we would get the dip out of it. I know it's disgusting. We would put it inside a glove and we would dry it out. We would sell it to the inmates that were inside the pod. One little bitty roll up cigarette would be a bag of Keefe coffee. So we were making bank off of it. And then when people would come in with real cigarettes, we would buy all the real cigarettes up for ourselves. And we were selling this redip. I mean, everybody knew what it was. They didn't care. They just wanted something that was actual nicotine. And ultimately, that's what I got locked down for was passing dip. And I wasn't even making no money. I was just giving it to somebody. Yeah, you got to be very careful because them eyes in the sky, they're always watching even if you think they're not. But the next thing I'm going to be talking about, it goes for female inmates. Now, the males would have to cut up all the bananas, like the kitchen workers, and we they would have to cut up the summer sausages. Like if a female ordered a summer sausage, it would have to be cut in half. Now the reason for that is probably exactly what you're thinking for. They wanted to use it like a man. I'm not saying every female. They didn't want to run the risk, so everything was cut in half. A lot of girls in a few jails that I was in, what they were doing, they would buy Jolly Ranchers off canteen, a couple bags, two, three bags, and they would get a cleaning glove, just a regular glove, and they would put the Jolly Ranchers down in like one of the fingers, and they would drop it in the hot pot, let a few of them melt, drop a few more in until it was a big Jolly Rancher shaped as a big finger. The women in a lot of the jails are only limited to one bag of Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> and I guess they found them when they were doing a search of the girls' dorms. And this ain't in every jail. This was just in one of the jails that they found the Jolly Rancher thing going on. But I just wanted to bring it up. But it's not like nationwide or anything. Each jail is different, you know, so... I'm sure if they want to get it done, they're going to get it done. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that they even thought of that because, you know, that's definitely thinking outside of the box. So whoever came up with that, big thumbs up. There might be a part two to this down the road, but that's all I have for now. If you would like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or become a member of my Patreon, the link is in the description below. If you haven't subscribed and you like all jail-related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. I'll keep you informed on all things jail-related. Thanks for watching Locked Up 365. Did you do it? Did you do it? It's that red button right there.